Hello everyone, uh, the efficient use of land, water, energy and other natural resources is the need of our. Therefore, IFL uh, presents a knowledge series, Kutum. Kutum is a platform wherein the company brings the industry expert, the housing developers together so that a sustainable infrastructure and a know-how model on green building can be created. Uh, to discuss further on the subject, we have with us Mr. Ashok Lal, who is an architect by profession and uh, is passionate and uh, expert on subject matter. Thank you, sir, for being with us. We welcome you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so my first question is that uh, we have heard a lot about the green building and their uh, relevant impact on social and environment uh, uh, areas. Uh, what is your take uh, in terms of uh, the benefits, the visible ones and invisible ones? Uh, once we have uh, the green building concept as such in mind? Well, I think, let me talk about the visible benefits of green building. The first principle of any green building is to make places for use, for homes, for recreation, for work and so on, which protect human health and human comfort. Right. That provide safety, for enjoyment of human life. That's the first principle. So it is to be understood that if a building is green, it is in favor of the quality of life enjoyed by the users of those buildings. Okay. How does this happen? It happens in simple ways. If I'm more comfortable inside a building, because the design of the building is such as to produce comfort, to protect me from the harmful outdoors or extreme temperatures of the outdoors or the rain or the damp or from the noise then obviously my health is better protected I am more comfortable psychologically okay. If the building is such then it, that its materials are carefully chosen they don't emit any toxic or irritant gases which some materials do if it is carefully chosen, then I will not have allergies, I will not have irritation of the eyes, I will not have headaches, which sometimes can otherwise occur. Right. So, some immediate things. Another very important, very pragmatic benefit of green building is that it pays a lot of attention to the saving of water, right. to careful use of water. Okay. We know, everybody knows, it's been our experience that water is short, you have to take really good care of it, you have to use it carefully, then you can retreat the used water and bring it back for reuse. So security that we enjoy in having good quality water for all our needs is another benefit of green buildings. This is what you can feel. Things that you don't feel but actually protect our world on which our life is founded are equally important. Correct. Actually, they might even be more important. Yes, yes. We know about climate change. Tonight in Mumbai, there are flash floods. Yesterday, there were flash floods. And the airport was jammed, the roads were jammed, and everybody was so much inconvenienced. You know, this has been happening more frequently in Mumbai over the last decade than it used to happen earlier. Why is it? It's because of climate change. It is because the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has grown to an extent where temperatures are rising, weathers are changing, and what we call extreme events are occurring. So green buildings try to make sure that you don't release unnecessary amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Either in the way we make the buildings, the materials we use, we use materials which use less electricity in their production. If they use less electricity in their production, then less carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere. We make buildings in such a way that they are more comfortable inherently. You need less electricity to obtain more comfort by air conditioning or heating, thereby reducing the greenhouse effect or the the excess of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Right. So, fighting climate change, then fighting environmental pollution, then fighting the pollution of the soil and the ground that eventually gets into our water, right? 
those are benefits we don't see but they're incredibly important which is more than the visible benefit absolutely right right so my second question is uh, as a pioneer in integrating the sustainable uh, architecture in the designing of the buildings uh, what are your suggestions uh, regarding the the key pointers uh, which should be kept in mind while designing the building or the any any construction which is happening first of all design according to the climate okay all right right simple example if you are in a very warm hot climate design so that you avoid the impact of the sun on the inside of the building right. don't put too much glass if you put too much glass you know what you're doing you're first making a solar cooker okay. when you made your solar cooker then you say i must refrigerate it yes then this is absolute foolishness really foolishness right. foolishness and i'm sorry to say a lot of people have gone the foolish direction <laughs> they better realize it's time to now take a few steps yeah. in the opposite direction design according to the climate principle number 1 right. try and build with materials that reduce the impact on the resource of materials the original resource recycle as much as you can reuse as much as you can use materials that have low embodied energy in the production of those materials where the amount of energy used in making them is reduced example if you can do if you can find timber secondary timber lakri which can give you doors and windows and now in different parts of the world they're building even multi story buildings using timber as structural material all right it is much more sustainable yes, than using steel or using stainless steel if you can do with less steel in your structural design you are doing a better job that's so even more beneficial that's much more beneficial right. especially when you have earthquake prone zones you have to protect against the earthquake you have to build the buildings that can withstand earthquakes very intelligent structural design will use less steel poor structural design will use more steel reduce the consumption of steel still get the performance that you want that's a challenge of design very important these are two pointers of course the next pointer is integrate greenery in your built environment so that you and uh, you encourage a more hospitable outdoor environment don't depend on the motor car as your means of transport ask for good public transport demand it from your politicians demand it from your government that's going to take you in the green direction